Hello, my name is Commander Dennis Spence, and I'm the Chair of Research Education and Facilitation at Naval Medical Center, San Diego, California. In this podcast, we're going to talk about some scientific writing tips. I have two objectives for this podcast. First, I'm going to review the ABCs of writing. And second, I'm going to discuss some general writing tips. What are the ABCs of writing? A is for accuracy, B is for brevity, C is for clarity. A mentor of mine, Dr. Chuck Bacchiano, told me once the key to successful medical writing is always to remember the ABCs. When writing, should, one should always strive for accuracy, brevity, and clarity. You need to be accurate in what you write. When writing, you need to be truthful, correct, and exact. For example, in the beginning of an introductory section of an article on postoperative pain, you might write, many patients experience postoperative pain. While this is true, a more accurate and exact phrase might be to write, in the United States, 20 million people each year experience unrelieved postoperative pain. Then you would go on to cite a reference to support this claim. The B stands for brevity. When writing, you want to say what you want to say in as few words as possible. Remember, medical writing is very purposeful. Many readers are busy professionals and clinicians just like yourself. And if you go on and on, they may lose focus and not continue reading your article. The C stands for clarity. In medical writing, you want to be very clear in what you say. Don't make it hard on the reader. If they have to work to figure out what you're trying to say, they will stop reading what you wrote. You're not trying to write for an English literature class or impress your readers with your literary skill. You're merely trying to express your ideas clearly. An excellent textbook to help you become a better medical writer is a book by Dr. Robert Isles called A Guidebook to Better Medical Writing. His central thesis of this book is that medical writing is a skill, and like any skill, it can get better with practice. In his book, he talks about the seven fundamental errors which contribute to poor medical writing. In the next slide, I will go over those and point out some things that he's discussed in this book. So what are the seven fundamental errors of poor writing? Medical writing, as I mentioned, is a skill. And I think this quote really illustrates, gives you a good example of why it is considered a skill. And this quote is by King, and it's taken from the book, Why Not Say It Clearly, A Guide to Scientific Writing. This book was published back in 1978. He goes on to say, Writing is a skill, like golf. Some persons are naturally good at it. Most are not, but all can improve with practice, especially if guided with proper instruction. A common phrase I hear from novice writers is that they say, I can't write. I'm no good at it. Most physicians and nurses could have said the same thing when they first were learning how to take a medical history or to interview a patient, but they got better with practice and instruction. Fundamentally, good writing stems from good thinking. On the practical level, transferring good thinking into words on paper is a skill. Once you master that skill, you're on your way to becoming a better writer. Learning to become a better writer can also be compared to learning to swim. No matter how long you stand on the side of the pool, moving your arms and breathing the way the instructor tells you, you won't learn to swim until you jump in and get wet. You may swallow a few mouthfuls of water and have trouble keeping afloat, but learning comes through trying. One of the first fundamental errors is that you don't know your subject well. Readers will forgive the writer who makes an occasional error in grammar, but they will not forgive the writer who wastes their time and who does not provide them with authoritative and useful information. If you do not know your subject well, it will be evident to your readers and it will put your material aside. You can tell if you know your subject well enough to write about it if you can discuss it with persons outside your field as well as those inside the field you work. Try doing both. Tell your readers you would like them to ask any questions that come to mind. The kind of conversation that results will help you recognize gaps in your own understanding. Some writers just imagine conversations with friends or relatives. They can hear the kinds of questions that a brother or a friend would ask, and they try to answer them. There's a saying, 
if you know something, you can talk about it. If you can talk about it, you can write about it. Likewise, if you don't know your subject, you can't talk about it. And if you can't talk about it, you can't write about it. The second fundamental error that results in poor writing is you don't know the, who your readers are and what they want. Medical writing is functional writing. That is, it is done to serve a function. To provide that clinician information on the latest and greatest gadget or the new procedure that may be life-saving. Almost always that function of writing is to help them make a critical decision. If you can answer the questions I'm about to present to your readers, you'll probably know them well enough to provide the information they need. You should ask, what do my readers, what are they going to do with the information I give them? What decisions do they have to make? How much do they already know about the subject? What do they know? And what do I want them to know? If you can answer these simple questions, you're on your way to be a better medical writer. Initially, if you're thinking about writing for a specific journal, you should go find the guidelines for authors published on their website and review those. Likewise, you should read multiple articles in the specific journal that you're interested in publishing in to get an idea of what type of articles they like and how the articles are written in terms of the organization and flow. Poor writing also results when you don't know how to use the tools of written expression. A surgeon is nothing if he or she doesn't know how to use surgical instruments. Medical writers must master the use of the tools of written expression, grammar, punctuation, spelling, capitalization, and other basics. This requires memorization and practice. If you're not already competent, get a college grammar book and work your way through it. Take a refresher course, or even get a tutor. Read good writing. Don't rely on friends who review your writing to correct your spelling, punctuation, and grammar unless they are experts and willing to help someone who doesn't evidently have time to help themselves. And don't expect journal editors or copy editors in the journal office to do a lot of that for you. If they have to go through and correct a lot of errors in your manuscript, then they're probably going to work too hard and most likely increases the chances of your paper being rejected. Journals reject papers that need a lot of work and publish those that don't. A fourth fundamental error is that you don't give it the time it requires. Good writing takes time. Most of the good writers I know say something like, I don't write well, I just rewrite well. Take the time to revise, edit, and polish your work. The alternative is to turn in a product that embarrasses you or fails to convey what you say. A fifth error that results in poor writing is when you write to an impress rather than express. We already touched on this a little bit. I'm going to read you a quote from an article. I want you to think about how clearly it's written and is the, the author trying to impress or express an opinion. Coincidence with the reemphasis on the biological basis of a psychiatry in the 1960s, community psychiatry and concern about issues of context and social welfare, of equity and access, came to dominate the attention of those primarily interested in health services provision. Although it may well add to such thoughts, did not dominate the actual delivery system as many patients experienced it. I don't know about you, but this was really hard to understand. But if you really look closely at it, what the author was trying to say was fairly simple. However, they weren't able to express what they were trying to say. They were merely trying to impress the reader. Poor writing also results when you try to hide something from your readers or you pre pretend to know more than you do. George Orwell wrote once that insincerity is the enemy of clear language. He could have been thinking of the introduction or discussion sections of some journal articles. Writers who are unsure of their grasp of a subject will fill an introduction or discussion with fluff to hide their ignorance. And finally, poor writing occurs when you don't try hard enough. The strength of your determination will often make the difference between good and poor writing. A sports reporter told about watching a young rider being thrown from a Bronco at a rodeo school. The reporter said at an old, to an old rodeo rider nearby, I thought that kid would stay on longer than that. The old rodeo rider replied, he could have, he just didn't have enough want to. You should have that want to when you're writing. So how can you get more writing done? As I mentioned earlier, good medical writing takes practice and training. 
just like the athlete who has to train hours and hours and years and years to get better, same thing can be said with good medical writing. Start simple and work your way up. Maybe write a case report, and then out of that case report, maybe ideas spawn about potential research topics, and you decide to write up a proposal for a research study. You conduct that study, and you write it up. The key is that with more practice, you'll get better at writing. Also, it's important to, to write short sessions rather than long, drawn-out ones. One of the problems is if you try and write for hours on end is that you lose your enthusiasm and you get fatigued. And when you get fatigued, you make more mistakes in your writing. Also, you should take frequent breaks. A good rule of thumb is to write for no more than 30 or 45 minutes at a time and then take 10 to 15 minute break. Also, I think it's a good idea to keep a journal. I keep a spiral notebook with me wherever I go and if an idea comes to my head, maybe I was stuck on writing a particular topic or a manuscript and something comes to me driving home. When I get home, I'll write down my, the thoughts that came to my mind. When you write in your journal, just write. Don't try and edit what you write. Just get your ideas down on paper. And then refer back to it when you go back to your writing session. Also, I like to call the salami solution can help you get more writing done. Some people look at writing a research manuscript and thinking, gosh, there's just, this is just, there's too much there. I just can't do all of this. And that concern actually limits them from actually getting the job done. But if you think a about it, a research manuscript really is broken up into component parts, and you can work on those different parts at different times. You know, a manuscript, a research study will have an introduction, a methods, a results, a discussion, and a conclusion section. What you can do is you can write different sections of that paper at different periods of time. That way it doesn't seem like you're doing everything all at once. Also, if you're working with a team of co-authors, you can share the wealth and let each individual author write a section of the paper. And then what you'll find is that you'll actually do have a lot more time. Are you a person who likes to outline, or are you somebody that's a little more likes to brainstorm? I'm one of those types that's more the in-between. I like to brainstorm and may, maybe loose, loosely outline uh, when I'm preparing to write up a manuscript or a section of a paper. You need to think about what works best for you. Some people need to write very detailed outlines, especially if they have a tendency to get off track when they're writing. Also, after you get done writing, or if you're reading somebody else's work, what you should try and do is what's called reverse outlining. It's go through each paragraph, section by section, and write a short statement about what they're talking about in that paragraph. See if you can determine what their thesis statement is. If you can do that, then you've probably found that there, there's pretty good writing there. Finally, you should only do one thing at a time. Don't edit while you write. What I like to do is write, put the information away, and then come back a day or two later, and then maybe edit what I previously wrote before I actually start composing a new section. Here are some tricks of the trade. When writing, you should be able to answer the following questions. The who, the what, the when, the why, the how, and also the what does it mean, and really, why is it so important? These last two things are especially important when you're writing about doing medical writing, because one, the author wants to know what does it mean? What do your findings mean in the larger context of published studies, and why are your findings so important, or why is it important for me to spend that time reading what you wrote? If you can answer these questions every time you write, you're on your way to being a better writer. Also, as I mentioned earlier, you want to quit writing before you run out of enthusiasm. Some writers even stop mid-sentence, and then they put the material aside, come back a day or two later, and they continue, they pick up where that sentence ended off. This is a good way if you feel that you, you're getting writer's block and continue off of what you previously wrote. Also, as I mentioned, you need to know your subject. Anytime you're writing, you need to really maybe first read broadly on the topic you're interested in and then narrow down your focus in the articles that you read that are more pertinent to what you're writing about. But it, it, the, One of the problems with poor writing is when people write about a subject that they don't know. You also need to be interested in your subject. When I first started graduate school years ago, one of my professors said fairly, fairly early on that you need to choose a, a topic for your dissertation that you really enjoy and that you can find yourself researching for the rest of your career. 
Same thing can be said for writing. If you're assigned a topic or uh, you're just having to write something because you have to, you need to finish residency and you need to submit a research report or a case study and your chief says you need to write this up, if you're not interested in it, you're not going to do a good job at it. Also, I'd like to list some ideas or jot some notes down before I write. Maybe I'll write a rough outline as I'm getting started and that might help spurn some ideas. Also, it might point out some weaknesses in my argument or what I'm writing and where I need to go look something else up. As I mentioned, you want to compose in one session and edit in another. Also, you should ask someone to critically edit what you wrote. This should not be your friend or your buddy, someone that's going to be nice to you. You want somebody that, can re that one, has experience in medical editing and that is going to give you critical feedback that's going to ultimately help improve what you wrote. And when you get all that red ink back with that first draft, don't be alarmed, set it aside, and then go through it another day. And go line by line and think, okay, what are they trying to say? And what do I need to do to make this clear? Also, if you remember those ABCs of writing, writing accurately, writing briefly, and being clear in what you write, you're on your way to being a better writer. If you'd like more information about how to become a better medical writer, even to learn how to choose proper words, write proper sentences, and even put good paragraphs together, Dr. Isle's book is an excellent resource. If you're stationed here at Naval Medical Center, San Diego, California, we have several copies in the Clinical Investigations Department that you can check out. Thank you.